is concentrated at the national level, while the graft stalks the evolution at every turn. The interplay between oversight institutions like the county assemblies, auditor general, the senate, and the investigative and procuratorial arms is weak, and the institutions not working together. But I want to say that it's not, not only that the corruption has been devolved, corruption has also remained very big at the national level. So the national level has no business talking to you about devolved corruption. When assemblies and the Senate inquire into a matter, the best they can do is recommend investigation. When investigators complete their work, the best they can do is to recommend prosecution. And there is, of course, no guarantee that the courts will punish the wrongdoers. Let us address these man-made challenges once and for all so that we can unleash the full transformative capacities of our countries. We need a constant and consistent monitoring of all laws governing devolution to ensure their implementation and to add statutes whenever they are needed. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we meet at a time our country is facing real grave threats. This is a reality check backed by government data. The economy is struggling. Our national currency is severely weakened. The shilling has fallen by 10% since March this year. Our people have been hit hard by punitive taxes and consequent rise in the cost of living. We have run away unemployment. Our healthcare system is broken. We face challenges with food security at a time climate change is turning everything upside down. From farming to healthcare, to provision of water and infrastructure, nothing is the same or predictable anymore. Unfortunately for governors, you are stationed where the desperation, the need and the expectations are highest. That is, at the grassroots, where people want instant solutions. I believe that as a country, we are lucky to be going through these challenges in the era of devolution. I believe that if county governments were not here to, to absorb some of the shock and act as cushion, the economic and governance challenges Kenya is going through today would have overwhelmed and overrun the national government. To continue providing buffers for our country and respond to the cries of the people, counties need a tremendous amount of financial resources in a timely and predictable manner. The national government, therefore, needs to understand and appreciate counties as necessary partners in the journey for a successful Kenya. The problems and responsibilities the people and the counties face today demand that we reevaluate and strengthen our commitment to preserve the place of the county government and bestow it with the power, the authority, the responsibilities and the revenues necessary to discharge those roles and meet expectations. In times like this, county government may be tempted to do what the national government is doing, which is to increase charges for services they provide to generate more revenue. And I was listening to the talk about its own revenue. I see it differently. I believe this is the time for county government to act compassionately and responsibly. The problems our people face today require that we invest within our means in programs that create jobs and put money into the people's pockets. 
Counties don't have to copy and paste what the national government is doing. I encourage you to be own models for innovation and creativity. Rather than extract more from the pockets of equally suffering masses, I encourage you to continue to provide communities and families with the tools they need to succeed so that they can in return finance counties without too much pain. Being on the ground, governors have no time to get into a lot of ideological debates that consume our politics in Nairobi. Counties should have no time for merely making com com commitments and announcements. Governors have to be practical. You will do well and set examples when you back up your pronouncements with con concrete action at the level of policy and practice. I believe that the work that you do, if done well, will with time have a concrete impact on the debate at the national level. This is the time to provide record amounts of assistance to our farmers to enable them to save us from the routines of farming, food imports, and food inflation. This is the time for financial inclusion programs and ensure the money reaches the intended recipients. This is the time to work on turning your, your towns into smart cities of tomorrow equipped with world-class amenities. I encourage you to soldier on and double your efforts at light manufacturing and value addition as a way of generating revenue and putting money into people's pockets. With focus, you should be able to set up world-class investment and industrial regions along the dedicated corridors of your counties to aid manufacturing. I want to encourage you to particularly promote labor-intensive manufacturing because it puts money into the people's pockets. And I'm talking to you as a manufacturing engineer. Put focus on building infrastructure, including roads, electricity, and water and farm irrigation. This will yield returns. We have to ensure that our policies are predictable and tax regimes stable. Ease of doing business in your counties must be therefore be a prime concern. Investors need to the assurance that the rules of engagement are the easiest that can be. Remove bureaucracy. With such clarity, you will be able to create employment opportunities, encourage an enterprise, and to create a bigger job market for our youth, widening your base for revenue. I believe it is time, again within your means, to allocate some of the money from own revenue to a cash transfer program to help protect the poor at the grassroots. I want to encourage you to continue with cooperation between counties. At the same time, however, we need a competitive element among counties to prevent the temptation to just maintain the status quo. Let us com compete even as, as you cooperate. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I want to disclose to you a reality slowly taking shape in our country, but which many of us, including the governors, may not notice. While national politicians may be getting all the attention, the action of translating policies into improvement of livelihoods is actually being determined by governors, county assemblies, and county governments. I see immense possibility for our county-driven growth and leadership in our country. I see potential for our county-driven quantum leap 
in our country. This hidden reality is not limited to one section of our own region. The potential is unlimited. Be open to ideas, investments, and innovations. You may just be the team that put the country on the path to a reversible takeoff. I want to conclude by referring to what Governor Jonathan B. said, the host governor, that uh, they are expecting bumper harvest in this region because uh, they did mandamanos in the farms instead of doing the mandamanos on the streets or all carrying sufurias. I want to tell him that this katiba that we have is a product of mandaman. <laughs> and I also want to remind that uh, if Mandamano can help the families whose uh, children were cheated or money being taken to Finland. There's nothing wrong with Mandamano. <laughs> what is wrong? is police brutality. <laughs> and finally, you want to tell a rogue ambassador, leave Kenyans alone. <laughs> if Manamano can lead to a dialogue between uh, Ichungwa and Kalonzo, everything is good with Mandaman. <laughs> tell the rogue ambassador, Kenya is not the United States. Kenya is not a colony of the United States. Keep your, your mouth shut when you hear. Otherwise, you will call for your recall back to your country. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Another round of applause, please, for the former Prime Minister, Right Honourable Raila Odinga.